somebody here is waiting for a little Zion to wake up from his nap. He's due anytime, but I wanted to chat with you guys quick because we all just got over being extremely sick with the virus that shall not be named because supposedly it gets YouTube videos flagged, so I don't want to risk it, but I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh my gosh, I still can't talk. But even before that, I was starting to feel extremely burnt out. So let me show you. My house is actually like cleaned up right now and it's it's chaos, okay? We've got Zion's stuff, random stuff on the shelf. Actually, the kitchen is looking fairly clean because I finally got this storage thing for all of his stuff because we just kept getting him dressed out here and piling the clothes on like the chair. I'm getting on a tangent here, but you can see like his bottles are out. I still need to wash them. We've got chaos on the couch, <laughs> all his toys, stuff everywhere, just everywhere. Oh, broken curtains. So two of them are down because they're broken and we're getting them fixed. Zion's got this high chair out now. I absolutely hate this high chair, so I'm not gonna recommend it to you. It looks like some sort of alien spaceship landing, as you can see here. And it's not good for little guys. Like I have to prop him up with towels on the sides and there's no footrest. So it's just, I don't enjoy it. But that's a lot of tangents when what I wanna come on here and talk about is burnout and an update on what's been going on with me. Life. The short version is I have been unapologetically binge watching Gilmore Girls with Zion <laughs> because he and I have just not felt good. We have been so, so sick. And he was actually in the hospital last week because he also got croup. <clears throat> excuse me. So it was very scary and then it was just hard. Like if you've been a parent with a sick kid and you have to take care of them while being sick, you're a saint. <laughs> it's so incredibly hard. I feel like I was taking Zycam, vitamin D, and melatonin. Like we can talk about that in a little bit if you want because I'm taking a lot of supplements right now trying to get my health back after having a baby. But I really do think that at least one of those, maybe the Zycam, maybe the vitamin D, maybe both, maybe even also the melatonin, from what I've been learning, have potentially helped me not get as sick as my husband did. He was incredibly sick. <clears throat> but I also have longer lasting symptoms and they're just not going away and I'm just tired and I just don't feel like working. So I haven't worked in almost three weeks now. Like I've barely worked. I think I've published a couple YouTube videos that I already had done and ready to go. And I've done a couple things for my patrons, but that's it. Otherwise, I've, like I said, been binge watching Gilmore Girls and I've been reading a lot of books. And before Zion wakes up, I wanted to show you because some of them have been really good. Here's a stack of some of the books I recently read. I also read Zeros, which was good. And I read some books on Scribd that honestly weren't as good so I'm not gonna bother mentioning them, but I just went on a book reading frenzy. So I started with this one that was recommended highly on TikTok and I thought it was young adult. It's definitely not, but it was really, really good. I love the cheese right now. For some reason, this was totally calling to me and it's not my genre at all. And then I went on to read these two. And by the way, they have the most beautiful covers, The Inheritance Games. And then book two is The Hawthorne Legacy and book three is not out yet, which I didn't know when I got these. So I was a little bummed, but oh my gosh, I really enjoyed this. It was very fun. Also not my typical genre. And then I got The Iron King and I would say it was okay. It gave me Cruel Prince vibes in a lot of ways, but I prefer this author and her writing. Her writing is so good. I just love it. So I don't think I'll be getting the other books in that, but it was a fun read. And this one, like I said, was also really fun. I think it's also a series, but it has a nice satisfying ending as book one. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. This was my TBR technically, but I totally went out and got different books instead. <laughs> Comment below if you can relate to that. <laughs> hey baby, somebody followed me in here. Let's close the door. We don't want to wake up the baby. The other things I was doing before I got really sick is I was trying to do more TikTok videos. So I had this shelf all set up with my books. But let's talk about burnout really quick before little Zion wakes up because he's due to wake up any minute. I should probably be drying my hair before he wakes up, but I just 
really wanted to talk with you guys because I feel like I am starting to get a better sense of why I'm burnt out and I'm also starting to finally feel a little bit more of my creative energy coming back Thank goodness. But I recently wrote a patron post about this because I was like, why is burnout such a big thing? And it's not just for writers, although that's what I'm going to be talking about because I feel like when you burn out as a creative, it's especially detrimental because you really cannot work. Like I literally couldn't work, which is why I went on a reading binge there that I just showed you. And I recently read a book on Scribd. I'm gonna try to find it called Dear Writer, Are You? and burnout and that's a really really good read if you're interested I really appreciated how she shared some things and I've talked about it in other videos so I won't like repeat it I'll just say definitely check it out if you're interested and I can't remember if it's that book or if I'm just mixing up metaphors but I was talking to my patrons and I was like here's how I'm viewing burnout right now it's like you're pushing a rock up a hill and it just keeps rolling back on you and you're never making any progress and I feel like it could be because of multiple things but the underlying issue to burnout is that feeling that nothing you're doing is really making a difference and mattering and that, I think, that feeling of what's the point is what really, really makes burnout start to rev up and get worse and worse and worse. Instead of doing things that matter and you feel like you're making a difference and you're making progress and your story is going well, those days I feel like help resolve burnout and bring back the creative energy. So I hope I'm saying this clearly <laughs> because I tried my best to write it out in this patron post and I'll link it below if you're interested and you wanna read it. But the very short version I was telling my patrons is like, it's either the rock that needs to be fixed or the hill because either you gotta like get a, a hill that's less steep so the rock doesn't keep rolling back on you so fast if you can get something that's a little more level that has some breaks built in you know like literally designing your life so that your hill is less steep can be a huge way to help with burnout and I feel like some examples of that like real life examples from my personal experience would be I've been trying to write a book in a month and that is a steep hill it's just incredibly steep and I just can't do it and instead of feeling burnt out and frustrated all the time why not level out the hill a little bit and be like yeah we're not gonna do that anymore <laughs> we're going to first take a break and then second come back to it at a better creative output level like I don't really think I can write every day but can I write three times a week that seems like a less steep hill maybe I can handle that but then the other part of the metaphor is well maybe you need a smaller rock so you're pushing this massive rock uphill of course it's gonna roll back on you because it's just too much for you that honestly I feel like is more commonly the problem or both maybe both are the problem but for me I tend to put so much on my plate it's like the biggest rock possible just follow me through here with this metaphor it's like okay I'm gonna do all these YouTube videos and I'm going to write books and I'm gonna keep up with my email which I hate doing I hate email and I'm going to also take care of a baby full-time and try to lose weight and try to fix my health and try to start cooking again because I hate cooking so much with a passion and you know get groceries and do the dishes and the laundry and go for walks and it's just the list goes on and on and on and it's not feasible to keep up to keep pushing such a massive rock up the hill every day so of course there's a lot of days pretty much every day when I'm trying to do that much that it's rolling back on me and things aren't getting done so I'm not claiming to be an expert on burnout by any means but I do feel like I'm starting to get some revelations <laughs> here her little feet tick 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 let's come out here my messy house and talk about it. I don't know what I'm doing. Can I just be honest with you guys? Like I don't feel like I have the answers and I am nervous that I'm gonna like go right back into burnout. So I guess when I'm looking at my hill, so to speak, that's what I picture being, I guess how aggressively you approach things. And I've been trying to approach it really aggressively because that's what I've done for the last five years, I think now. But like I said, that's just contributing to the hill being so steep that the rock is constantly constantly falling back at me. I'm constantly feeling like a failure and like things aren't going well. So instead of being like, oh, I can be creative at any point in the day, all day long, maybe I need to be like, I think I have about an 
hour of creative energy maybe and then i need to recharge that creative energy by reading more which is something that's been so so nice to do and i'm so thankful that i finally found some good books because i was just dnfing so many books and so many of them just were not calling to me and that was frustrating as well but that's a tangent okay somebody's awake but i wanted to finish that thought because i was gonna say i've been thinking that if i could only get some help you know if i had people helping me then maybe I'd have more creative energy and maybe but maybe I just you know taking care of a little guy is super fun I love him so much but it really just zaps you and then he's sleeping through the night amazing now but he still wakes up early so my sleep is not perfect yet and so that also zaps creative energy so maybe instead of being like I should be superhuman I should be able to do it should 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 instead I can be like eh, I guess I can't let's Make the hill less steep. What the heck are you talking about, buddy? I'm gonna go get him and I'll be right back. Hi, Zion. Hi, Poopy. Did you sleep good? Did you sleep good? Let's go into the living room. Mama's gonna go dry her hair. There you go, look at you. We're gonna see how long he can do tummy time while mama cleans up the house a little bit. <laughs> Ready, buddy? He's doing good. So let's do one of those kitchen shots where this gets cleaned up real quick. I'm just kidding. It's definitely still chaos down here. <laughs> Maybe we can pretend. Hi, young man. You wanna come up with mama? Goodness, such a good boy. It's getting so big. So big, I can't believe it. Okay, cookie butt. Let's go, let's go chat. I'm trying desperately to remember what I was trying to say. I think I was in the midst of moving on to the rock analogy, right? Maybe? Hopefully that's where I was going with things because I've just been thinking about how I think every author, probably everyone actually feels this way about their passions. It's like, I wanna be where I wanna be now. I wanna publish these books now. I want them to be written now. I want everything to be done now. And I think that's probably pretty typical, again, like I said, of everything that we want and we're excited about in life. For me, my rock, so to speak, was I was trying to make that happen now. Like I was trying to just pile on as much as I could possibly do and some things I couldn't possibly do and I just I want to okay let me tell you what I wanted to do publishing wise and then I'll explain to you what I think well I don't I still don't know exactly what's gonna happen but I just know it needs to slow down so what I wanted to do is I wanted to have already finished writing book three as you guys have probably known if you've been watching my channel but I actually have only written maybe 10,000. I can't remember now, honestly. Maybe I was closer to 15,000, actually. I think I was, right around 15,000 words. And then I just dropped off the face of the earth with writing over a month ago now. I have not written anything since May 16th, and it's June 28th or something today? June 27th. See, that's you. He's a cute baby. And actually, let's back up to last time we talked, because I have not actually vlogged or recorded a video in 
over a month either, believe it or not. I had a bunch of videos like stashed and ready to go. So like the last video that just came out was my signing vlog where I was signing books and sending them out to everybody. That was like two months ago now. But that's a perfect example of burnout as well where it's like, I worked so hard on that video. That was over three hours of footage and I really tried to make it amazing. But whether it was the topic that wasn't as interesting or the thumbnail wasn't as interesting, that video just didn't do as well. It was like number 10 out of the last 10 videos that I've done. And honestly, Honestly, it's probably that I just needed a more clickbaity title, something more interesting on the thumbnail that's like, hey, I'm making a book castle, I'm signing all these books, here's my process. You know, it's a fun video. I worked really hard on it, I'll link it below if you do want to watch, but even though it's like a small, small thing, and it's not actually a big deal, and it doesn't bother me that much, but the fact that I put all that time into it, and it didn't do as well, is sort of a letdown as well. I'm not gonna call it a failure, but it's again that rock falling back on you kind of feeling. That's a good example of that. And of course, right when I published it, it had been done for a couple weeks, but we were very, very sick with you know what. And so I just, I didn't feel up to fixing the thumbnail and doing anything, I just, was like, I guess that video's a flop and that's fine. And by the way, again, I'm not trying to like be a downer because sometimes videos will do really well later on, but it's whenever something makes you feel like it's not going well, like you're not getting stuff done, you're not moving the rock up the hill. <laughs> We should just read it by me. Other fun updates since it's been a while since we talked. This little guy, I would say he's almost completely fixed his torticollis. Like this is the direction that he normally can't turn. And as you can see, he's been fully turning that way since we started talking. He's watching Netflix show us different options for what to watch. <laughs> So it's keeping him busy. Ooh, there's another one. And I have actually lost, I think three pounds. So it's not that much in the grand scheme of things since I'm trying to lose like 40 pounds, but I am very excited about that. It was probably what my hubby and I are calling the virus diet. <laughs> But I have also been making some other changes where I have been watching tons of YouTube videos and I feel like honestly losing weight and getting healthier, specifically getting healthier, are not as hard as we make them out to be. I think it's a matter of drinking a lot more water. So I pulled out, this was actually my hubby's water bottle where you try to get to the different spots during the day and I'm gonna try to start drinking more water because I think sometimes we eat when we're actually thirsty. So that's like a very easy, simple change. The other one is we went for a walk this morning and. I was doing this prior to getting sick. We were going for a walk every day and I really, really felt like it was helping me lose weight as well. Where are you going? You wanna go play with your toys? Okay. There you go. Speaking of health stuff, I've talked to my doctor again since we last spoke. So in case you haven't seen those past videos, I'm low on a bunch of things. So I'm low on vitamin D, zinc, iron, and I thought I was low on vitamin B, but she said that actually it's most likely the iron deficiency that's causing other issues. And all that to say, it turns out that my main issue is I'm extremely extremely iron deficient right now. Here's the craziness, ready? Prenatal methylated, which helps you digest it. Melatonin, magnesium. We got some vitamin D here. Since we're showing all the pills, I also take allergy medicine, yay. And then I love this brand that my hubby got me. This is the vitamin B. And then last but not least, my new friend, the iron pill, where I have to take four of these a day. Two in the morning-ish and two later on in the day, just so that you can actually get all of them digested. Whew, that was a lot. I'm somebody who absolutely hates taking pills, so I am hoping that once I can get everything kind of back up to the right levels, that I can just do kind of like one daily vitamin that it's like has everything that I need in it. Oh my gosh, he rolled over. I put you on your back because you're cranky, but now you don't care because you did it yourself. Good job, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yummy. <laughs> But now let's come back to what is it gonna look like going forward because we're talking about getting somebody to come watch him once or twice a week and that way I can work for longer stretches. There's this desire to work but there's also this I don't wanna miss any time with him and I have mom guilt for even thinking of asking somebody to come watch him for, even for a couple hours or something like between two naps because then I don't get to hang out with him and I love hanging out with him and he's super fun. So it's just been really interesting trying to figure out how to balance that. He's six months now. He sleeps usually three naps a day and I know some kids do like really long naps, only like a couple a day. He personally does like an hour nap at a time now and so I just know I only have about an hour which is not not a lot of time to get stuff done. And sometimes I gotta use it to shower, like you saw. 
Yeah? You think so? Really? So that's like one nap right there just to take care of life and that only leaves two naps or two hours a day to work right now. So that could also be why I've been feeling the pressure and been feeling like there's just not enough time to do anything. Yeah, 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 right. Really? Yeah? Should we go check your, go check your diaper. We'll be back. All right, so again, this is an honest look at my life right now. Hold that for mama. And we've been introducing baby food, so we're doing one at a time. So again, that's another thing that's taken up a ton of my time is researching how the heck do you start giving kids solids? And then how are you supposed to feed them? Oh my gosh, I have to learn to cook. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Mama hates cooking. You ready? Yeah. And we put this on. Here it comes. Pa -cha -pa -cha. <gasps> Look at this big boy. Ready for some carrots? Here's your bowl. Yeah, there's nothing in it. Here's your spoon. I'm gonna go heat this up. I'm pretty sure, yeah, check that out. Oh, that's cool, the bowl can stick. Ooh, I like this new, oh, okay, it definitely didn't stick. <laughs> okay, you wanna play with that? That's fine, that's totally fine. You're probably not gonna eat it anyway. <laughs> I just don't have a lot of time right now and I just wanted to give you guys a really honest look at <laughs> what it's like around here. So I'm gonna go eat lunch. Just let me know if you'd enjoy seeing more day in the life stuff like this because this is what it is. <laughs> We're just trying to keep up and survive some days, but I love every minute of it. Even though the books are being written slower, it's worth it. I hear the sound of empty streets. Zion is sleeping. He drank almost all seven ounces, which you know, makes them sound like a really great baby, but earlier today he only had two, so that's why he'd be so hungry. He is playing, but he's on his way to falling asleep, so he should be good. <clears throat> Let me just see if I can sum up all my thoughts about burnout and what's been going on, because I feel like I was very much all over the place in this vlog for obvious reasons. There's probably no one solution fits all situation here, but some of the things that have been helping me, as cheese ball as it sounds, doing some self-care, whether that means, again, you know, drinking more water, taking the vitamins I was showing you guys, trying to eat healthier, at least one vegetable every day, trying to put in healthier foods into my body first, better portion sizes, just simple, simple, obvious changes like that. So there's like that kind of self-care that you literally taking care of your body and making sure you're fueled and actually, you know, just putting the right things in your body because it actually mentally changes things. I have less of a brain fog. I sleep better sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the healthier side of things is awesome. Like going for a walk every day. I really think just those like smaller changes hopefully will make a big difference. And I can kind of try to keep you guys updated and let you know. Cause I, like I said, I have 40 pounds to lose. On the flip side, there's those books that I mentioned and that kind of self care. And I really think as an author, we always feel like, well, I have to be writing. I. I should be writing, but a lot of times taking the time to read and refill that creative energy well, I guess you could call it, is huge for having the desire to create and actually having cool ideas come to you. You have to be putting creativity in if you wanna get creativity out, you know what I mean? Editing Bethany here because I never really got around to saying the other types and examples of self-care. So for example, I know that I have about three of Zion's naps a day to work with. So maybe I'll work the first two naps, but the third one I will leave for myself. So that's an example of self-care. Or the other thing that I was talking about with my patrons was maybe I, you know, instead of working six days a week and making every day a work day, I take the weekends off and I just step back and relax and have fun. And those little changes, yes, they feel like they slow you down in the short term, but I think they help actually speed things up in the long term because they prevent burnout. And then the second thing that's really been helping me is like I said, that rock and hill metaphor. So it's kind of two things. Figuring out how to have a less aggressive hill, AKA not attacking things so hardcore and just slowing down and, and taking a more manageable pace. And then on the flip side, looking at that rock of all the things that you have to push up the hill and you have so many things and you're not superhuman. And so just stepping back and being like, actually, 
maybe I don't have to do this and I don't have to do this and I can take this off my plate today and uh, all of a sudden instead of you know pushing this massive rock or trying to push it up this you know straight up cliff wall that is just impossible and makes you feel like a failure every single day instead you're going up this gradual incline with a manageable rock and you're actually making progress maybe you're here and then tomorrow you're here and then the next day you're here and it's those little things that can make you feel successful and not burnt out and i really feel like it's been hard for me especially to change the rock size because i just constantly want to do more than i'm doing no matter what i don't i feel like it's built into my dna is like when we were sick i felt like i should still be doing something <laughs> i think that's an enneagram three type thing if you've ever looked into enneagrams it's one of the personality types it's really fun actually okay i heard some squeaks but i just checked on him and he's officially asleep yay you gotta love when it goes well like that so i hope that i have giving you guys a good update. I feel like so much has gone on. It's been a month since I've recorded anything. That's a lot to kind of put together. <laughs> Going forward, what I want it to look like, I still haven't totally figured this out, so don't hold me to this, because I think one of the best things you can do when you're in burnout is kind of hold things loosely and allow yourself to, again, slow down when needed so that you don't just jump right back into where you were and not feeling good again. I'm thinking that it's probably not feasible right Right now to do both YouTube videos and writing in the same day because there's a lot of creative output in one day and like you saw I've got a busy little baby here that I have to take care of for most of the day and so I only have like I said about two hours and so when I was trying to cram in all the video stuff plus all the writing stuff plus all the other random things in my life that I have to do for both work and then for the house it just wasn't enough time so instead I might be like okay today is Monday this is a video recording day tomorrow Tuesday is a video editing day and then if all goes well I will come back to writing on Wednesday Thursday and Friday I think three days a week is enough and I'll take Saturday and Sunday off completely this is not me saying this is what my whole life's gonna be like from now on but I think just for a season of life specific to creativity this is the season of life that I'm in and if I don't want to go right back into burnout then I need to accept it and kind of look at my creativity in a more real realistic way and be like okay maybe I only have one to two hours of creative energy a day before baby I was trying to do like eight plus right I was working more like 10 or 12 or 15 hours a day and not all of that was creative but you get the idea I was just like keep going keep going keep going and it's all fine like I'm not here to say this is the right way or this is the right way because I think it's more dependent on your life and your season of life like my life has changed so much in the last year that it doesn't look anything like it did last year and that's okay that's the thing I think with burnout is accepting it and not seeing it as a failure because if I was to go into this still secretly being like but I really wish I could do more then I'll probably still feel burnt out even if I am doing less. Because like I said, I think the burnout is coming from feeling like you're not getting where you wanna be. Let me know what you think of that and if that feels relatable to you at all. But I would love some tips from you guys on what's helped you with burnout because I feel like a lot of us have dealt with it. But I think I'm gonna wrap it up here because this is gonna be a lot of footage to edit. And like I said, I'm trying to slow down and do less. So I have to give myself less work to do. <laughs> so thank you guys for hanging out with me. I hope this was a fun vlog for you to see what my life looks like right now and I'm really excited to hopefully get back to writing so let me know if you would like some vlogs on that and I'll talk to you again very soon bye it started out like a movie scene something